if you've ever gotten lost navigating, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. Thank you for coming. Um, Gun Mag Warehouse is a big support of us, as you guys know. So uh, it's worth monetarily. Get in there, buy magazines from them. Get all the good stuff going for my California guys. If we're still rolling on that train, keep buying mags. Uh, gun laws are stupid. Um, if you're looking to support the channel, we have Vertex and LEX ammo. Uh, get plaid, get outdoor wear, all that kind of stuff. Get ammo, get out there and train. Gentlemen, ladies, attack helicopters, all that good stuff. Today we're going to be talking about basic navigational tools or what do you need to navigate. Now, this is going to be a part of a much larger series on navigation in general. Uh, we have a lot of videos, but if I were to put everything into one video, it would probably be about uh, like three or four hours long. So this one's simply going to talk about the different tools um, that you need and that you can also have to make things a little easier on yourself to navigate. Um, we'll be talking about specifically how to employ these tools uh, in a later video. But I, what I will give you in this video is some basic tips, tricks, things that I've seen and things that my buddies have seen. Um, I always consult with a bunch of buddies from a wide ranging um, you know, swath of career fields to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Uh, anyhow, and they also gave their input. So let's go ahead and let's talk about it. So to start off, what do you absolutely need to navigate? So you're going to need to absolutely, bare essentials is going to be a compass, it's going to be a map, and then you're going to need a notepad of some type with a writing utensil. That is what you need bare minimum to do any type of orienteering or actual map work. I'm not talking about popping up and following a uh, road on uh, you know, Google Maps or anything like that. I'm talking about bushwhacking off trail. So that is what we need. So let's kind of get into this a little bit. Let's start with compasses. There are a lot of different compasses out there. Um, if you're in the military, you know what this is right here. This is a linsatic compass. These are the compasses that I recommend. I know a lot of people like the Silvas or whatever other type of crazy doohickey compass that there, there is out there. But I found that the uh, linsatic compass is very accurate, very rugged, and it is very precise. So let's talk about why you might want to use a linsatic compass. First off, it has a sighting wire this allows you to shoot very precise azimuths when you are navigating for very far distances. This allows you to be much more precise. So it is for that reason that I typically recommend this. Now, if you're in the military, it has all that good stuff that you want. Um, when you are buying your Linsatic Compass, there are several different types out there. Make sure you get the one that has tritium inside of it uh, for its illumination. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with tritium is, it's that stuff that the Dr. Octopus guy with the floating penises um, uses to make full sun and it like flows, falls into the river and Spider-Man gets his face. Okay, anyhow, point is, uh, make sure you get the tritium one. Um, there's a one that uses phosphorescent paint and uh, that thing is complete bullshit. Don't use that. So make sure you get the one that has tritium. Uh, again, it has a half-life of like 10 years. Uh, so for 10 years, this thing is growing at full brightness and. Anyhow, make sure you get the tritium one. That is the correct one to get. They sell these on military bases everywhere. Uh, you will need it. Now, on your Linsatic Compass, it is highly, highly recommended that you have this right here. This is a lanyard. So there are multiple reasons to have a lanyard um, on your compass. The first reason is it allows you to attach it. So usually I loop it through a belt loop, pull it back through the loop, and then I have it. Um, just to make sure you don't lose it, you'll be surprised how easily you can uh, lose these things. So that is one reason you need a lanyard. The second reason you need a lanyard is to measure distance on maps. This allows you to do it very quickly and very easily. Just take a string, measure it from the two distances, put it out on the, um, on the map in order to get the correct distance. It's just a much quicker way of doing it. Um, <clears throat> finally, the last reason you might want to use a lanyard is to strangle the LT who gets you guys lost. That way you can make sure he never gets you guys lost ever again. Now, if you're not familiar with how a compass works, a compass seeks magnetic north. Now, it typically seeks magnetic north. If you use this thing indoors, it will you know, seek whatever is the strongest magnet. Uh, that might be a table, that might be anything. Now, in nature, it's typically the Earth's actual magnetic field is going to point north until those magnetic fields flip and then we all die. But until that point, it's going to seek that. Now, it will seek some other things. It will seek watches. So if you put, if you have this open and not locked down, 
And what I mean by lock down is this is a magnet right here. So when you place it against it, it locks and keeps that uh, compass needle from moving. But anyhow, if that is not locked down, you put your, your uh, watch up against it, it will deflect the needle. Other things that will deflect the needle is anything that's ferromagnetic or that has electromagnetic um, you know, interference. Things are going to, you know, all the stuff that people wear tinfoil hats for. So things like belt buckles, uh, depending on the type of material you use. Not on my belt, though. Um, so a lot of guys are holding this down here and they're like, oh, and it's deflecting the needle towards their junk. So not because your junk is ferromagnetic, hopefully, but rather because you have belt buckle. Um, the big one is radios. A lot of guys have the radios and they're like talking into it and they have like the compass out and they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like deflecting the needle. So watch out for that. Watch out for antennas off radios. And the big one that a lot of people don't realize is power lines. So depending on where you are, power lines put off a strong enough uh, magnetic signal, uh, depending on the size, that it can be up to 50 meters uh, that you're having deflection of the needle. And again, um, even minor deflections in the needle by a degree or two can really uh, just screw the pooch when it comes to navigating. You know, a degree over a kilometer is, I believe, about 18 meters or so off your point. Uh, depending on where you are and like thick vegetation, that can might as well be lost at that point. So um, realize that magnetic deflection from ferromagnetic things is a big deal when it comes to, the, to compasses. So make sure that you are protecting them. Now, the cool thing about that is that um, you can detect some cool things like electric fences. Um, typically, electric fence will deflect the needle of a compass. So it's an easy way to check if it's um, on rather than putting the back of your hand against it. Don't go like that. Put the back of your hand will reflexively pull away, by the way. Uh, don't pee on them either. But anyhow, we have your um, compass. Make sure that after you shot your azimuth and you're walking to your points, that you don't walk with your compass out. You're walking point to point. Um, if you're walking with your compass open like this and trying to like walk off of it, you're gonna invariably trip, you're gonna fall, you need crap. It's just not the way to do it. So do not navigate um, off that way unless you absolutely have to. And we'll talk about more about you know navigational methods, but just as a quick note. Okay, so we have compass. Um, I have a couple different compasses. I have cracked them before. Um, I had one open, I tripped, and I fell, and I actually cracked this one. It's very sad, very sad about it. But they are very tough overall. <clears throat> so now that we've talked about compasses, let's talk about maps. You need a map. Um, typically, I like to navigate using MGRS, which is a military grid reference system. Um, I think it's one of the simplest systems to use. It was made for the Army. As we know, the Army is borderline mentally handicapped. So that um, allows most other, you know, normally functioning human beings to use it fairly easily. So I usually recommend that you use MGRS. If you're not familiar with it, that's okay. There are a couple videos up already about it from other people that are very informational. Or I will also be putting up an MGRS video in the future. When that video is up, I'll put a link somewhere right there. That'd be cool and pop up. But until that moment, um, you might have to just read up on it. Um, as far as a scale, the scale is, you know, the size of the terrain and all that type of stuff. I find that the 1 to 50,000 is a pretty good scale to work off of. You are allowed to still see a good amount of detail um, and get fairly precise with it. Uh, you know, 1 to 24 is even better. You know, everything's much larger, but uh, I found that 1 to 50 is much more realistic as far as the amount of maps I need to carry. Um, I do recommend having a physical copy of a map. I know nowadays everyone wants to run it off of their GPS and all that kind of stuff, but it's just a really good idea to have a physical copy of a map. Now with your maps, make sure that they are laminated. So if you don't, lam lam if you don't laminate your maps, um, uh, water gets on them, invariably water will get them on, on them. Uh, they're gonna start falling apart and disintegrating and then you're just screwed. Um, also, uh, even if there's no water and there's just dust, it's gonna start eating away at them, they're gonna get dirty, you're not gonna be able to see where you're going. Bad news. So make sure you laminate them. If you don't laminate them, make sure you have a map case for them. Make sure that you protect them. Now, along with that, make sure you have a pencil uh, to mark it if you don't have it laminated. If you do have it laminated, make sure that you have some type of writing utensil that works on there. I recommend map markers. Those are literally made for it and they work pretty well. So um, we have our map. So once we have that out of the way, we need to have a notebook. So usually, um, me and literally everybody else in the military uses a right in the rain. Uh, they come in sand colored or green or black. Um, I've gone through, you know, probably a solid 50 or 60 or 70 of these, somewhere in there um, <clears throat> in my time in the military, including the really big thick ones. Um, so the paper is waterproof. It will still get wet and kind of 
a little bit weaker, but it will survive as opposed to uh, non-treated paper. Um, gel pens don't work very well in them, so make sure you use a pencil. They do make pens specifically from Right in the Rain um, that work on these, and they're pretty awesome. But they're also a great company, big supporter of the military. So love Right in the Rain notebooks. Highly recommended you use them if you are out there navigating the boonies. This will survive. Okay, so everything that we've talked about up to this point is all that you really need to navigate. Um, everything else that we're gonna talk about past year is a really good idea to have, but technically you don't need it, but I would highly recommend to have some of these items we're gonna talk about after, as they will uh, either make your life far easier or they're just uh, critically necessary in certain situations. But technically speaking, if you're out orienteering, map compass, and a notebook to write shit down, you're good to go. Okay, with those things being said, the first thing that we're gonna talk about is a protractor. Um, a protractor is highly, highly recommended. Uh, if you don't know what a protractor is, um, it's essentially a clear piece of plastic with a string in the middle. It allows you to get azimuths and headings and bearings and all that kind of crap much easier. Now, of course, those are on grid north not, uh, you're not off the uh, magnetic, so you do have to account for magnetic variation and convert that over. So for example, uh, being out here in Washington, near Fort Lewis, magnetic declination is around 17 degrees east. East is least, that means we're gonna subtract that. I know I'm kinda going fast right now, but we'll be explaining in later videos when we talk about how to navigate off of maps. But what that means is if I took a heading of zero using a protractor, I would need to make sure to account for that seven degrees of declination on my compass because my compass is seeking magnetic north. You see how navigation can get a little complicated? It can. So that means I'd have to take a heading of three, four, three. So again, things to think about, but protractors are amazing. You don't have to orient the map prior to shooting your headings and getting all that type of stuff. So I am a huge fan of protractors. Um, I think it is definitely the way to navigate. Um, so get a protractor and learn to use it. And we'll talk more about how to use protractors here in the future. Okay, before we get into the most obvious one, uh, I'm gonna talk about another favorite of mine, which is the Sunto uh, wrist compass. So um, this thing is often overlooked, I think, um, and I understand why, but I love this thing. Um, because if I'm doing a military movement or something like that, it's just very nice to have this right on my wrist to where I'm able, you hold it up like this and you look through the window where I can get a just a quick heading. So if I'm heading on direction, I'm like, uh, did I get kind of off? kind of double checking or if you got a guy leading and you're not sure if he's doing the right thing and you're kind of like you get on his line of kind of sight and you're like oh you're kind of shooting that kind of weird it's just a good thing to have it's, it's a quick reference if you're calling in a helicopter off your bearing or something like that it's just an easy thing to do so I really do like the Sunto uh, wrist compass now with the Sunto wrist compass a lot of people freaked out and they're like oh you know the the wrist watch is going to pull the needle off and interesting in that if you put it right over it will definitely deflect it but um on the typical watch I wear in the field, which is a G-Shock, I don't get any type of um, uh, you know magnetic deflection of the needle um, unless I put the wrist compass right on top. When it's up on my wrist right there, it's completely fine. Um, if you want, you can wear it on the other wrist, but typically I wear a GPS on this um, hand right here. Just as a quick note, I'm kind of a kind of a navigational tool whore. Like I just like having a lot. Like you know, two is one, one is none type of guy. Anyhow. Uh, Sunto wrist compass, really awesome. They're very cheap. They're like, I think 25 bucks or something like that. So um, I do use these a lot. A lot of guys put them on their packs and they can just kind of look at them off their packs, pull them up. Um, I've seen these all over. So these are awesome. Get them. Okay. GPS, right? I know that's what everyone's going to talk about. The GPS is awesome. GPS is amazing. Uh, it gets your precise location. Um, you can, you know, plot points. It'll give you you know, precise exact distance and precise exact bearing to that location. And it's amazing. And there's a lot of really good things to be said about GPS. Um, I'll just kind of give you a couple cautionary tales when it comes to GPS uh, to make sure you don't rely on it too much. Because again, we are trying to talk more about orienteering and kind of bringing that back a little bit because, you know, we, we never know what's gonna happen. So first off, GPS is very accurate. Um, uh, GPS, if you're not familiar, is a global positioning system. It is a uh, array of satellites, and they uh, give you your position. They are military, they are government operated and owned, and they can be very, very accurate within plus or minus, depending uh, on the device you're using. Uh, you know, three, maybe even closer, more uh, meters. So that's incredibly precise. So the GPS device I have right here is the one I use most often, and this is a Fortrex 401. 
There are other GPSs from Garmin that are cheaper or more expensive that have less or more capabilities um, that are built just like this. Find out which one you, you need. Um, I prefer this one for the activities that I typically perform. Um, so the GPS. First off, um, the GPS works by um, you know, having clear line of sight to satellites. So sometimes when you're hiking, you don't always have a clear line of sight to satellites, which is why I don't focus and rely too much on GPSs. Um, I was doing a navigational exercise maybe seven years ago. And uh, yeah, I finished all my points, I hit all my points, um, leading my little squad around, and all we had to do was hit my final point. And so we we're feeling kind of jovial, you know, pretty happy we're done. So I was like, yeah, here's your, uh, here's your heading, you're gonna hit a you know, 287 heading and just you know, 600 meters right down this uh, mountain right here. And he's like, got it boss, so we started heading down. And um, instead of shooting his points using his compass, he got lazy and started just using his GPS and navigate off of that. So the problem was is that the area that we were in was going into a canyon. So as we descended into the canyon, the uh, signal uh, was not strong and the GPS was not getting accurate readings. Because of that, he was using the compass on the GPS. It was no longer accurate. We got off our heading and ended up walking right into a swamp, which sounds stupid. Like, how do you do that? It's amazing how easily it can happen. This was also when I was enlisted before I was an officer. So before you guys make comments and jokes about that. But anyhow, we got into the swamp and we had to then, you know, freaking reshoot lines of angulation, figure out where we were because we, they took away our GPSs and we had to do it the old fashioned way and we got out. But the, the, you know, the thing I took for that, from that was that make sure that you don't rely too much on GPS. It is an excellent tool, but understand its limitations. <clears throat> now, the reason I like the 401 um, is that it is very precise on tracing your steps. So it doesn't have like a map per se in here. It will show you kind of distance as you zoom in and out. Um, it has like basic stuff, but you can easily retrace your steps using the 401. I find that very useful, especially like in the civilian world, like you drop like, you, know, you leave gloves behind, you leave something behind, you can easily retrace your steps very precisely using the 401, and that's very cool. It has, very, it has other great things um, that it can do as well. Um, obviously, it gives you your exact position and that type of stuff, and you can plot points, and it will have those on the map. You can see those in relation to you, and that is cool. So the 401 is awesome. There are some really cool GPSs out there that are actually a little bit cheaper than the 401. Um, Garmin also has the eTrex series, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, those, you can actually load GPS maps onto them. Uh, they're actually free. If you go online and search free GPS map Garmin, you're gonna find them. Um, Garmin charges you quite a bit. You can download free topo maps and they're very, very accurate. I've used them quite a bit. So, for like any country. So, that is a really cool thing about the eTrex is you just have a map right there and you can zoom in and it will get more detail and you can zoom out and it will get less detailed. So they're awesome. You can see precisely where you are. You can course on that to your physical map. Again, it's a really cool feature, but make sure you don't get too focused in on using that. Um, I know I've done that before where I just navigated off of that. Like I've gotten my points, I've plotted all my points on my GPS and I haven't even touched a physical map. And yeah, was I fine? Yeah, I was, but really you should be double checking the GPS. So I would highly recommend that if you're beginning, you know, navigating and that type of thing, that you take the time to double check all the information that your GPS is telling you. Not because you specifically distrust the GPS because they are very precise instruments, but rather because you should get good at orienteering without the GPS and become a more well-rounded uh, navigational person. So that is all I will say about that. So gentlemen, ladies, we've talked about a lot of different tools that we can possibly use for navigation. We've hit anything from the compass. We've talked about maps, making sure they're laminated. We've gone over notebooks. We've hit the center wrist compass. We've gone over um, <clears throat> protractors and then finally GPS units. Um, there's lots of different stuff out there start off with the basics. I would definitely include a protractor in there and start to learn what to do. We have a lot more videos coming. We're going to be out there actually hiking around, having fun. And uh, hopefully you guys can kind of understand why orienteering is both a fun thing to do and also a very crucial skill to know. And I would argue a skill that has um, in recent times definitely fallen to the wayside for a lot of people as we become increasingly reliant on GPS systems. If you guys have any questions about navigation, I'll be answering those in future videos. There are a lot of great subject matter experts on it already online. I don't claim to be the best at all. So go, go out, check those out, uh, get some more information. 
and I appreciate you guys. Now, if you guys are looking for training relating to survival, bushcraft, and that type of stuff, we have some very cool stuff coming, so stay tuned. But as you guys know, I'm a big fan of guys like Fieldcraft Survival, um, Bear Solutions, Haley Strategic. They do a lot of mountain survivor, uh, a lot of mountain problem solver courses. Highly recommended. They know what they're doing, and I might be working with them a little bit coming in the future. So check those out. Gentlemen, make sure you look cool. You look cool when you're not lost. And as we know, the LT is always a loss, so he's not cool. Take care, gentlemen. Love you guys. Thank you for watching. I've got nothing else for you. <clears throat> Last thing, uh, brushing your teeth. Brush your teeth. Make sure you take care of your teeth. Uh, you know, once you're an adult, that's all you have. Uh, you can get veneers and all that type of stuff. That's kind of weird when they pop out. So take care of your teeth. Um, brush them, floss, rinse. You know, it goes a long way. Oral hygiene matters. You matter. <laughs> if you guys have gotten this far, Big Daddy Unlimited, it's like Costco, but for the firearm and tactical community where you can make all your wildest dreams come true if you have money. Uh, it's pretty cheap for the most part. Sometimes, you know, some places might beat them out, but overall, they have the lowest prices. So check them out. I have a link right below. Guys, love you. Thank you for watching. We're done for real.